This is Josiah Plays Torment, Tides of Numenera. Okay, we're in the Reef of Fallen Worlds. I just fixed my game so that it actually works. And I can load games and I can save and stuff, which is great. And now I'm going to move forward. And, uh... Come on? Come on what, boss? Alright, here we go. A bubbling mass of sludge floats on the surface of the water. Every once in a while, an oily nodule separates from it and hurtles into the sky. You catch momentary glimpses of a muck-coated object in the putrid mass. Well, this is lovely. Let's examine the sludge. Carefully, you lean closer to the heaving mass. After a moment's study, you notice that the globules rising into the sky always contain something, be it a shining core of untainted seawater or a tiny fish. With my perception, I can see that far below the water, you spot a vast, dark reservoir of the sludge. Well, let's try to retrieve an object trapped in the sludge. I got a 75-er. He got a 60. She got a 75. I feel strong with 75%. Let's go. Critical success. Oh, I just got another cipher. The next time sunlight strikes the object's streaked surface, you're ready. You snatch it from the oily mass and clean it as best you can. Gained item, fresh vapors. Looks like a little cup of steaming something. Looks like a fucking latte. I found a latte in the sludge, guys. <laughs> a simmering jar made of metallic glass. Inside the jar rests a strange miasma. Its vapors sit crystalline and perfectly still until held. The glass vessel twists and writhes when grasped. When you put your ear to the device and listen closely, sounds of weeping and hysterical laughter rise from within. Typical latte. Warm to the touch, once inhaled, the vessel becomes ice cold. The user feels panic, fear, nausea, and then sweet relief. A torrent of emotions akin to getting a full rest. Saito, we do not know what was really responsible for that success. You know what was responsible? RNG. RNG was responsible. Now, if I had failed, it absolutely would have been the blessing of Saito. It heals 10 points of intellect. Wow. Five uses. Holy crap. This is a really good cipher. And it confers an intellect edge to you for I don't know how long. Probably until you rest or something. Intellect edge means you spend one last point for intellect things. That's actually crazy good. Crazy good. I'm not sure whether that awful muck is harmless. Or you are immensely lucky. Either way, do go on poking things, dear. It's quite entertaining. I'll search for more objects. You spot no other mysterious objects in the bubbling mass. I'll wait for more treasures to surface. Minutes tick past as you patiently wait beside the mass of sludge. Nothing surfaces. I'll wait for more treasures to surface. You see nothing but muck and more mech. I'll wait for more treasures to surface. What? I knew that was going to happen because I tried it a million times in the fucking beta. At last, your patience is rewarded when an unusual object bubbles to the surface. Before it can sink out of sight again, you snatch it up. I got a Tar River globe. This transparent glass sphere encloses a miniature scene of a river of tar running through a wasteland. It also contains a mystical blue liquid, which seems like it would mix with the tar if the globe were shaken. You notice ancient, indecipherable writing around the outer base. An oddity. You found a veritable filth-stained filth trove. Well done, dear. I wait for more treasures to surface. You watch patiently, but nothing else comes up. You got lucky, kid, but you're not going to find anything else. If it were that easy, you'd have scavengers camped here 28 hours a day. I'll wait for more treasures to surface. 
Nothing else comes up. Nothing else comes up. Nothing else. Just gonna spam this a little bit. I actually don't think there is anything else, but you never know until you click this a hundred times. You never know until you click this a hundred times. I'm not counting though, so I don't even know when I'll get to a hundred. No, I don't think there's anything else. Pretty sure there's not. What if I filled up an entire YouTube video of just me doing this? And what if it seemed ridiculous and everyone was making fun of me, but then like 500 times later, some really awesome shit came up out of here. Yeah, like a thousand times and you get a legendary item. Think I should stop? Five NPCs died while waiting for treasures to surface. <laughs> you think I should? You think I should stop? I think I should stop. Where's the horde of folks coming to see the guy who fell from space? I know, right? They sure are taking their time. Alright, we're going to give the seed pod to Alagurn, and I'm going to keep the fresh vapors and the shimmering glass. Oh yes, Saito, I discovered this in the beta. It's actually the one thing I dislike about this game. Stuff changes significantly if you, if you spend too much time resting. And I don't mean, like, some ludicrous amount of time. I mean if you rest more than, like, twice, shit starts changing. And by shit starts changing, I mean NPCs disappear that, and will never come back. Quests resolve- there's, a, there's at least one quest that will literally resolve itself if you don't go fast enough to do it yourself. And there's another quest, for sure, that you can completely lose the opportunity to even get that quest because the NPC that gives it to you dies if you wait too long. Whether you visited the area or not, which I didn't like it. I complained about it on their beta forums. I thought it was, it was a bad design, but other people thought it was good, so. Well, I can play at whatever speed I want. It, time isn't passing right now. Like, I could stand here and just let this run, I could go AFK for the next eight days in real time and come back and start playing and no time has passed in game. It's only when you rest. But the problem is, you need to use your stat pools all the time to accomplish things and the only way to get your stat pools back is to rest, other than with certain items that you may happen to find that can do it, you know, once in... But, but the point is, in order to rest as little as possible, I have to be extremely conservative with how I use my stat pool points. That's why I haven't spent any effort on anything. The one time I did spend effort was on the quick fingers thing over here, and I was planning to reload that anyway. So there is going to be some save scumming. There's going to be some save scumming because... I don't want the whole world to move on without me before I've even had a chance to go there. Well, it's not the whole world. It's like per gener- it's like per area. Like, like it's not like stuff from like way later in the game is already changing. But the stuff like in this one city, you know, this one group of zones or whatever that makes up the city. Thanks, Calistige. What's this thing? A yawning intake marks the front of a long, dead construct. Inside, the metal is pitted, black, and ancient. So this whole thing is like a big, giant something from the past. Save scumming and a Josiah plays? Madness. A cable connects this spout to the collection device. The nozzle looks like it may have been attached to another machine at one time. The strange lines and rippling forms of the sunken buildings are dramatically different from the architecture above the waterline. 
This device is collecting black goop from somewhere underwater and pumping it to the nearby spout. Black goop, huh? Quick save. This metal door is thick, heavy, and unmarked by time. Double rows of circular bumps run horizontally and vertically across its surface. It is firmly sealed. Is it covered in braille? Let's examine it more carefully. The metal surface is infused with minuscule threads that are barely visible to the human eye. They only run in straight lines and right angles, and they seem to converge at the circular bumps. Upon closer inspection, you notice that each of the bumps is unique. Some have flat faces, others are actually many-sided polygons, and a few are marked by tiny apertures. Unfortunately, you don't see anything that resembles a knob, keyhole, or access device. You try touching both the flat planes of the door and the small bumps, but nothing happens. Examine it again. Alright, that's the same thing. Uh, let's knock on the door. You knock lightly at first, then harder. The door makes no sound at all, nor does it shudder or yield. There's no one at home, dear. Hasn't been for thousands of years. She peers at the door. One of my colleagues at the Order claimed that she got inside, but I don't believe her. Alright, I'll leave the door alone. What's this? Oh, more encephalic rush. More... Okay, so I can tell you this right now. Among the many things that have been changed since the early beta that I played, they are giving out shitloads of items that heal your stat pools. That was not the case before. So maybe I'll just find so many stat pool restoring items that I won't have to worry about it too much. Getting trolled by a door. I know, right? I know. I can mess with that thing. Read that. We read this and this. What is up with this cube? This seems cool. This massive construct was trying to climb across the top of the reef when it died. Its surface is pocked with tiny scars and scratch marks. So see, this is like a massive thing here. Like this is like these are like its legs. These are like something like shoulders basically with 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 legs coming off of them it's like a huge it's like a huge living mechanical creature of some kind cobalt petals fold over a short metal stem calcified minerals holds the ancient weapon closed Original Fallout 3, Van Buren was supposed to have a system like this, though? Well, I don't like it. It's the one thing I don't like. I want to be able to take my damn time getting... Well, hold on. I wouldn't mind if it was places you'd already visited. If I visit a section of the city, a map of its own, and I talk to the people there, and I get some quests, and then I leave, and I fuck around and rest for a while and don't go back and do stuff there, it's okay if stuff changes. But I don't want stuff changing on a map before I've ever even been to that map for the first time. You know what I'm saying? And that, when I found that out in the beta, I was like, I was, I was shocked. You had to trigger them first, yeah. Yeah, you had to trigger them first. If you just didn't talk to those companions in Baldur's Gate or whatever then it didn't matter how much time passed, when you went back and talked to them, that's when the timer would start. Alright, here we go. Let's go forward. Uh-oh. Drama. 
here's those people that we've been waiting for for hours and hours. Looks like a looks like a sci-fi post-apocalyptic ska band just rolled up on us. As you step onto what looks like the back of the enormous construct, four strangers approach you. In the lead is a wiry man with parallel scars running from cheek to collarbone on the left side of his face. You know this guy's going to be sinister. He has he has scars. He gives you a welcoming smile, pulling on gray gloves embedded with pulsing lights. Oh god, he just put a Nintendo Power glove on. Now you're playing with power. He's about to play say something to you when he notices Calistige. Cal! I thought you'd sworn off trolling the reef. Found anything nasty? Oh, tasty. Found anything tasty? I don't know why I said nasty. His eyes travel up and down, both you and Alagurn. Odds and ends, Koro. Nothing that would interest you, I'm sure. Her words are calm, but she has gone quite still. I'm gonna let Koro and Kalistige talk and see what they say. His hand curls into a fist at his side. I was wondering specifically if you'd seen a fallen star that landed near here not long ago. I've seen nothing of the sort, dear Quoro. Her lips close thinly. What about your friends? He turns to you. I know most of the draft that scavenges the reef these days. It's a rare pleasure to see a new face. Hmm. Well, lots of options here. Nice scars, how did you get them? That's very diplomatic. What are those gloves for? Unwelcome but anticipated complications. He does not elaborate. He does so love his ambushes. Calisiege whispers in your ear again, even though her mouth is closed and she isn't looking at you. He didn't have the gloves when I knew him last. But I'd wager they're connected to devices in the area. So, Quoro says, apparently unaware of Calistige's interruption. The star, have you seen it? I love how the deception line starts with, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Where did this star land? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be reduced to harassing noble travelers. I never saw it, you see. My employer did, and thought, who is the most trustworthy team I can send at a moment's notice? He winks. Luckily, they were on another assignment. We were interested, and we weren't too drunk yet, so... What interests you about this star? Uh, kind of you to ask, Quoro says, clapping his gloved hands together. So few people are interested in the tangled motivations of paid explorers. He spreads his arms as if holding the sky and continues. The world is littered with ruins and fascinating secrets. Trouble is, anyone can claim them. But when something falls from the sky, ah, that's rarer and a man can make his name off such a find. He pauses, then adds, We're also being paid quite handsomely. That helps. Trump is getting a two-minute standing ovation. Man. Who are these people that love Trump? Who are they? What? How much did Trump have to pay those people? If orcs can have that accent, so can one billion-year-old humans. Good call, MA6200. Enough chat, I think, he says, and there is no humor in his smile now. Where's the falling star? Nice scars. How did you get them? Two things are more dangerous than death in this world, he says, his smile widening. Asking impolite questions of strangers and playing with Numenera you don't fully understand. 
My error was in the latter category, and I've grown more careful since. Ah. So in other words, he fucked himself up with a device he didn't he didn't know how to use. Blessing of Saito. You could have just told me Blessing of Saito, Koro. I'll be honest with you. I saw the star, but don't know where it landed. Oh boy. Well, I'm trained in deception. Base difficulty is 35%. Oh, look at this. Look at all these things that I love that it tell that you can it, you can have it tell you what all the modifications to the difficulty are. Oh, look, I made it harder by asking him about his scars cuz he's irritated with me. So if I hadn't asked him that, it would be easier. But I'm trained in deception. He doesn't suspect Silver and blue are my dominant tides, and both of those gave me a bonus. So I have a 65% chance. He has a 50% chance. She has a 50% chance. Now, I really want to succeed at this. I could give myself a 100% chance to succeed if I spend two intellect, but then I'd only have six left. Probably spend one intellect here and go for the 85 piece. Success. Yes. Critical success got my point back. That's what I'm talking about. Not because of Saito. Hashtag not Saito's fault. Because a good thing happened. Interesting bonus system. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. Perhaps one billion years is enough time that basically every combination of human social structures has been exhausted and you get wacky combinations. Yeah. Like Amish folks that wear kilts and smoke ganja. <laughs> Those two sound pretty cool, actually. <laughs> Dude. Some fucking kilt-wearing, ganja-smoking Amish would be chill as fuck. I'd hang out with them. For real. Koro studies you for a long moment before sighing. All right, he says. Well, do let us know if you spot anything of interest. I'd like to say we'd pay for the privilege, but if we were rich, we wouldn't be down here, would we? Now, I just talked myself out of a fight. Ordinarily, this is a fight right here with these four guys, and look how much XP I got. That's like the same amount of XP you'd get if you beat them in a fight. Nice thinking, kid. That would have been a fiasco. You figured out why they were here, right? Hmm. You think Calistige told them about us? Excuse me? Are you suggesting I had something to do with Koro's plans? Are you suggesting you didn't? An old friend of yours just happens to be waiting for us, armed and outnumbering us, as we return from the greatest find the Reef has seen in years? It's too convenient for me. Too convenient by far. Of all the idiotic, paranoid delusions, you really believe this, don't you? You really believe I'd use a halfwit like Koro to stab you in the back rather than do it myself? See, kid? She'll stab you in the back first chance she gets. Most likely in your sleep. He throws up a hand, forestalling Calistige's retort. Look, I don't care. Fact is, I can't trust you anymore, and I wonder why I ever did. This is the last we travel together. I've got enough to worry about without having to watch my back 28 hours a day. He turns to you. You coming, kid, or what? Real cast off to Numenera? Yeah, it sounds like a reality show. All the civilizations that got off Earth, are they all just watching this like a reality show? Hmm. Coming, kid, or what? You're really going to walk away from each other over this... Oh, this is just the last needle that crushed the anine. Reference we all get. 
You haven't seen one-tenth of her depths, not one-twentieth. She's a backstabbing bitch, and this mess here only proves it. Always a paragon of class, Alagarn. If I did have any interest in betraying you, do you really think I would need Quoro's help? Yet this is the thanks I get for coddling your pain-rattled, judgmental weakness for so long. I've had enough. He turns to you. Child. I am happy- Okay, if you want me to be on your side, the first thing you can do is not call me fucking child. That's step one. Child, I am happy to guide you, but I will not walk another step with this paranoid buffoon. I don't think you're here for the right reasons, Fire Snake. What do you mean? Finally, something we agree on, he growls. Kid, she'll chop off your head and spit down your throat. I'll get you where you need to go and let you sleep at night to boot. It's up to you. Why can't I travel with both of you? Can't you just work it out? She bursts out laughing. <laughs> My dear girl, we have been working it out. Alagorn's petulance, his obstinacy in the face of fact, drive me away every day. He might not be strong, but he's also thick. Oh, he might be strong, but he's also thick. Is he thick as organic stone? I dare you to try traveling with him and see how long you endure. Not as long as I have, I'll wager. Reality show catchphrases. Ah, yes. His face darkens under her accusations, but he manages a pained smile. As if you're doing me a favor by staying with me? Do you think I don't see your true self and all those echoes around you? That's you, Calistige, every facet of it. Your vivisectionist heart hasn't changed, just the way you present it. I thought I could help you, but... I'll go with Alagern. As you wish. Should you change your mind, I'll be at the order of truth. But don't bring the complainer. A farewell to you, child, and best of luck. You'll need it. She, she mad. I think she mad. Good riddance. He gestures toward the stair. Come on, whatever answers exist are up there. We'll find what you're looking for, what both of us are looking for. Crisis. Now that you've dealt with Quoro and his goons, you can continue on to the city of Sage's Cliffs. To reach the city, cross the bridge to the north end of the platform. The thing is, this is actually a pretty interesting fight. And I and I just skipped it, which I'm not 100% thrilled about. Because there's like different things you can use during the fight. You can do stuff with this thing, and this thing, and this thing. You can even talk to them in the middle of the fight. And like, get one of them to surrender or run away or something. Or you can talk him down partway through the fight. You can, if you kill them in different orders, it causes different things to happen with, like, some of them might run away, or they might, like, use some special tactic, depending on what's going on. If you kill the one guy, he's got a thing on his arm that you've got to, like, disarm after that, and it takes a, some time to do, and you're still fighting. It's really fucking interesting. There's a lot going on in the encounter if you, if you actually fight him. But, uh, well... As interesting as it is, I, I didn't show it to you because I'm a terrible fucking streamer. Question is, do I want to reload and kill these guys? There is a shallow depression in the surface here, like many others scattered around the construct. Unlike the others, energy still pulses across this one at random intervals. A slight yet implacable sense of unease emanates with each wave of energy. There is a loose lens at the center of the depression. You think you could redirect the psychic effect somewhere more useful, but it'll be tricky to get it to go to get to it in between the energy pulses. Without any antagonist to aim it toward, the device doesn't serve any obvious purpose. A lambent green fluid drips from end of this device's novel, nozzle and hisses angrily on the metal surface beneath. 
Without any antagonist to aim it toward, the device doesn't serve any obvious purpose, so you're supposed to use those during the combat. A spherical head hangs loosely from this stanchion. A single metal fiber holds it in place. What is it? We don't know. Crazy Numenera shit. A sickly green crust scabs over numerous cracks and divots in this turret. forward. Not now, kid. We can talk when we get to the city. This is the city. That's the Reef of Fallen Worlds. Pretty cool looking area. Pretty crazy. Now we will go to the city proper. The gold tide represents charity, sacrifice, and empathy. It is the tide of people whose primary goal is to help others, especially at a cost to themselves. Finally getting to the third area. Well, technically, okay... Let's get you to the cult of the changing god. They're encamped by the clock in the great square here. Well, technically, we had one area, then the next area in our mind, then the dome room, then the then the reef, then now. They were technically getting to the fifth area. The fifth map. Those are some really big things they have over their heads. Twin creatures of a type you've never seen flank a central orb, their cultural significance lost on you. Hmm. Looks pretty cool. Looks like an egg. These look like some kind of like dragons or something. Alexander? Thanks for getting rid of Calistige. You have no idea what it's like traveling with her. Though I suppose you've had a taste even from that short trial. He scuffs his toe into the ground and looks away. I'm going to say this once. I'm not much of a talker, but you know I have questions about your identity. What you're willing to bring me on says something about you. What that is, I'm not sure yet. Still, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, and I'll help where I can. Clear? Hmm. Yes. So that's settled. We got things to do, right? What's your story? Not exactly my favorite topic. Fine. Ask. Can you tell me about your history? He watches silently for a minute, considering his words. I'm not from around here. I was the local Eon priest for a small aldea. Orman, it was called. Far west of here. Things happened. I left. Here I am. Got it. You falling asleep, Jen? Well... Could be bedtime, so good night. Not on good night, I guess. Tides are kind of like alignment. Yeah, there's five of them or six. Each one is a color, and each one represents a different sort of uh, motivation, like outlook on life, kind of. But the thing is, they're not good and evil because they're all based on 
on sort of a neutral concept which can be taken to a good or an evil level. So a person could be aligned heavily with one tide and they could be a really good person or they could be aligned heavily with the same tide and be a really evil person depending on how they actually how they actually act upon upon those impulses. So they're not based on morality, they're based on They're based on results more so than 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 on morality. Can I make the text a bit larger? You got bad eyesight. Well, it's already larger than I really want it to be. It can actually be smaller than this, and I made it larger just so that people could see it a little bit better. Hold on. Let's see how it looks if I make it one size bigger. Just listening along, he narrates everything. No, Tarawak's been here for a while. Tarawak's been here for quite a while, I think. Good night, Jen. Thanks for coming by. Have a have a good one. I want to talk about I want to talk about you again. Not exactly my favorite topic. Fine, ask. You said things happened that made you leave your village. What things? He shakes his head slowly. I'm not ready to talk about it yet. Tell me about your history again. I was an Eon priest for the Aldea of Orman. Things happened. Here I am. You said you were an Eon priest. What's the story with that? I worked with them for years. But when I came to them for help, they refused me. They gave me no time, no resources, and no aid. They said I had to give up my researches. Said I was... He bites off the last word. He grunts and looks away. <clears throat> Order of truth and I don't get on. They think I'm carked and I think they're frauds. We exchange these little pleasantries every time we meet. Only got one friend left there and I can't even contact him most of the time. Hmm... Why do the Eon Priests think you're cocked? Because I speak my mind to them. Who's your friend at the Order of Truth? Orth Fong. He does a little research for me from time to time. Personal work. Can you tell me about your tattoos? They look almost alive. Let's see if he says anything new. All right, that's the same thing you said last time about the tattoos. How did you come to travel with Calistige? When the Order of Truth failed me, I sought other help. Calistige was known for finding things, so despite her reputation for being unreliable, I approached her and she accepted, provided I help her find a way to achieve her transcendence. His eyes go far away for a moment. She seemed so kind at first. When it became clear neither of us could help the other, she became cruel and spiteful. I don't know why I stayed after that, or why she stayed with me. Habit, I suppose. Did you and Calistige have a uh, relationship? He grunts. <laughs> If you can call clawing and scratching at each other a relationship, then I suppose. Hey, I'm not going to kink shame you. Everybody's into different shit. His eyes grow far away. It's pleasant in the beginning. 
I needed solace and she needed validation, perhaps. But when I failed her, she grew bitter and cutting. I never heard the end of it. She used her words like a whip. She cut me down to the bone. Well, that sounds rough. She sounds like a real edgelord. I had other questions. He waits quietly, his eyes guarded. How are you holding up? As well as can be expected. Well, that was a meaningless little exchange. I want to ask you about Sage's Cliffs. I haven't got much to say about the place. I moved here because I needed to. But it's a sewer. I hate it. How's that for a thought? Been my home since I came here, and I can't seem to escape it. Why don't you leave? Why don't you mind your own business? Let's continue on. Yes, let's. Alright, so we made it to... Circus Minor. Not to be confused with Circus Major. Now that we're in Circus Minor, we're gonna save it up. I think we need to talk to this little Otero chap here. He kind of seems like a small person. But I'm not gonna hate. But come, come back, little mini person. Wind spins off the distant sea, sweeping between you and the boy, whistling up toward the peaks of Sega's cliffs. He glances at you, then at the crowds in the plaza beyond. He appears to be looking for someone. Otero definitely did not max his curse slider. Saw you wandering down in the reef, he says. Did you get to that star before the others did? He looks back at your face and grins. Mm, guess not. That ain't a face that's found good pick. A lot of... Wait, what the fuck kind of voice was I just trying to use? A lot of people went looking for the star, did they? Blue tide raised, that's what I'm talking about. No, not too many. Gotta be a carker to go down to the reef. That place is haunted. But despite his hard words, his eyes settle on yours, studying, deciding. His mouth settles into an irritated line. Look, he says, running a hand over his stubbled scalp. You hide it well, but I can tell you new here. I ain't trying to offend you, but I don't like leaving folk new to Sagus on their own. If you got questions about the city, or Circus Minor in particular, I'll answer them, free of charge. Of course, it looks like you already have a guide, he says, straight-faced to Alagurn. Though you might be better listening to someone with taste. Or anyone else who doesn't think living in the underbelly is a good idea. What's Blue Tide? Just don't Google it. Wait, that's something else. <laughs> oh, God. Do not look anything up on Urban Dictionary. I don't know what Blue Tide is on Urban Dictionary, but I'm sure it's something horribly disturbing. A little extra advice never hurt anyone, Allegorn says placidly. And not everyone likes sleeping under the stars. Or fresh air, the boy replies, grinning. Or self-respect. Allegorn rolls his eyes but subsides, smiling. Oh, self-respect might have been Allegorn talking. I can't tell. Anyway, Otero says, what do you want to know? Do you live here? Not really, he says. Walls are nice, but they keep you in one place. I like to move around, explore. You don't have a home. Oh, he's a boy without a home. Don't need one, he says. I'll carry my life with me. He pats his bags. Alrighty, we got a little homie squatter here. Nice. It's good times. 
Good times. You know, people all assume that being homeless is just super terrible, that it must be super terrible for everyone. But actually, for me, it wasn't that super terrible. I mean, certainly there were ter terrible aspects about it, and some times were worse than others. Definitely. Um, but for the most part, though, it was a time of my life that I that I found a lot of meaning and and freedom and and even joy in especially certain parts like when I was in San Francisco squatting that was the best time that was one of the happiest times of my entire life there is something very freeing about not being tied down to absolutely anything and just sleeping wherever you want on the other hand, when it's really cold and you can't find a good place to sleep for the night and you're fucking freezing your ass off laying, you know, behind some bush on, on the property behind a church and you wake up with icicles fucking covering your face, those are times when it's less good. Anyway, let's keep talking to Otero. This is not story time. He pats his bags. Hmm. What can you tell me about this city? Depends on what you want to know, he says. I spend most of my time in Circus Minor, but there's other districts too. Government Square, Cliff's Edge, the Underbelly, and Caravanserai. He scratches his chin. It's also the Reef of Fallen Worlds, but you've already been down there. Tell me about the Reef of Fallen Worlds. Only carkers, slavers, bullies, and diggers desperate for scrounge go there, he coughs. Ah, and you, of course. He stares past you down the winding steps. Besides, folks think it's haunted by ghosts from the previous worlds, and I've seen enough down there to agree with them. But you don't need me telling you what it's like. You're lucky you didn't get robbed on your way back. Or worse, he eyes you expectantly. Someone named Quero tried to rob us on the way up. I bluffed my way past him. Silver tide raised. Probably because I was honest. Heh! That's not easy. Otero rubs the back of his neck she sheepishly. I got a go kicking from him. From trying the same thing once. I don't even know what Saito and, and MA6200 are talking about in my chat right now. It's, it's just crazy town. I want to know about Caravanserai. That's the port of Sagus, he says. Any ship that can fly lands there, makes the trades, and takes off for foreign lands. He turns a scornful eye toward the distant flags on a high crag. Plenty to see right here in Sagus. Don't know why people insist on leaving. What is Cliff's Edge? A damn dangerous place to live, he says, laughing. <laughs> Folks build their houses out on the ledge, over the sea. And everyone gets upset when one of them falls, he sighs. I hear it's been getting worse lately. Watch your feet up there. Can you tell me about the underbelly? Imagine an underground place where the city sends everyone they don't like. Cannibal cultists, mutants, carcass and thugs. Now, air this stink like burning metal and cooking meat. That's the underbelly. That sounds like my kind of place. It ain't that bad, kid. It has a good side. Yeah? Otero says, grinning. If you ever find it, go ahead and let me know. <laughs> nice. You mentioned Government Square. I did, he says, nodding. Bet you can guess what's up there. What's in Government Square? Really? He says, looking pained. You want me to lay this out? Fine. The government... The government is in Government Square. And the order of truth, he admits. 
But they're just as fancy as government folks. I want to ask about something else. Sure, he says. I'm not going anywhere. Yet, anyway. He's talking about red tides. The result of blooms of dinoflagellates in seawater, which can be quite dangerous. Also, I suppose some near to wells use it to refer to menstruation, but we would never stoop to talking about that in the pursuit of humor. Uh, what? <laughs> okay. So, we're in Circus Minor now. Yeah, the heart of the city, he says, folding his arms. The levies and politicians will tell you the government square is the center of Sage's Cliffs, but they're not thinking right. He spreads his hands, framing the plaza. When Vic come to Sagus, they come here. They talk and trade, flirt and fight, tell stories. Everyone who comes here leaves different. His hands fall. Anyway, what do you want to know? What's happening on that stage over there? An execution, he says, rolling his eyes. It'll be going on for a few days yet. All those folks think they'll learn great truths from the nightmares of a dying man. He shakes his head. It's not worth my time, but it might be worth yours if you haven't seen one before. Proper English on which continent? Because proper English in North America does not include a U in, in words like that. Certainly, on the other side of the ocean from here, proper English does include a U. But if you live in North America and you use that, then I think you're just being a pretentious poser. Yeah, I said it. I went there. No, Canadians don't get a pass. They don't get a pass. They don't get a pass. Might be worth yours if you haven't seen one before. I have lots of people that watch my stream that are Canadian. Jen, who was in here before, she's Canadian. Obviously, Saito is Canadian. Dennis, who was in here before. Malik70, he's Canadian. And now Darn Oz, of course, you're Canadian. So I don't even know how many Canadians are in here, but a lot. There's constantly Canadians in here. And none of them spell it like that except for Saito. Of course, I don't know that I've actually seen anybody else from Canada write words like color or humor or armor or honor to see how they spell it but i know that i know that saito has a tendency to you're french canadian ah so you, you speak french i assume parlez-vous francais if you say some stuff back to me in French right now, I'm not going to know what it means, because even though I took, like, three years of French as a kid, I don't remember anything of French. I do not remember a thing. I can't even begin to speak French. Let's see. What are you doing here, anyway? Just got back from a scrounge, he says. I'm here trading Salvo for supplies before I set out again. Enjoying the sights, you know? Salvo. He must be talking about salvage. His eyes sweep the crowds again. Oh, because I have perception, I can see. You can't help notice that he doesn't seem to be enjoying himself. He looks downright unhappy. Guilty, even. Who are you looking for? He flinches, then glares at you. At first, it seems like he's not going to answer. A girl I met a while back, he says at last, looking away. 
She was new in town, like you. I'm just wondering what happened to her. If she's okay. He swallows. Anyway, you have any other questions? I wanted to follow up about this missing girl. Maybe I could get a quest. Apparently not, though. A certain je ne sais quoi. A certain I don't know what. So I know a couple things in French, but not much. Does anyone around here know how to fix complex machinery? Hmm, he says, scanning the plaza. Pra, that's the bug lady in the market. It's pretty good with machines. You might ask her for advice. He rubs the back of his neck. Otherwise, you want to visit the foreman in the underbelly. They might be able to fix it, if they can stop fighting long enough. I want to speak about something else. Sure, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, anyway. Where can I find a place to sleep around here? Call to the Changing God might let you sleep in their camp. Or you can try a Tranquility's Rest in Caravanserai. Where's the Order of Truth? You already told me it's in Government Square. I'll remember that. In Government Square, from here, follow the path around to the left and look for the stairs going up. I'm looking for the Cult of the Changing God. Making a note. Well, you're not going to be able to miss them, he says, smirking. They're cramped around that weird clock on the other side of the square. He settles his hands on his hips. What do you want with those carcers anyway? They owe you something. I can say, yes, I'm the changing god. <laughs> I'm not going to, but that's pretty funny. I just need to ask them a few questions. Fair enough, he says, shrugging. Even carcass get it right sometimes. I think that's everything with him. Farewell. So you were around. Thanks, Otero. You were very helpful. Thought this was a civilized city. All right. So, what we're gonna do is quick save and pause. And in this episode, if you're watching the stream, don't go anywhere because not only am I going to keep playing, I'm about to give away a copy of this game. If you're watching on YouTube, that's going to do it for this episode. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Torment Tides of Numenera.